Well, hey, sorry about that. I was blowing the dust off the microphone. Got a show for you today. And hold on, because it's going to be a ride. I'm coming out guns blazing on this one. Welcome to Appaloosa, More Than Just a Color Breed, a podcast dedicated to showing the world the versatility and adaptability of the Appaloosa hordes, as well as the people devoted to preserving and enhancing this outstanding breed. Hey, how are you doing today? Thank you for joining me here at the only podcast that talks about the Appaloosa horse. Today, I want to talk about 2019 Nationals and Youth World. Then I want to talk about the World Show. And then after that, I want to talk about 2021 Appaloosa Nationals and Appaloosa Youth World. Yes, the word is that Nationals and Appaloosa Youth World is going to Indianapolis. We'll talk about that. Okay, let's start off the show talking about the Appaloosa Nationals and the Appaloosa Youth World Show. APHC put out a newsletter saying that there are a thousand people who attended Nationals and the Appaloosa Youth World. Most of those must have been on the youth side. We went towards the end of Nationals, and we were, we were only there for like one day. We had one horse. One class, that was it. And the largest back number I saw was less than 500. So that tells me that less than 500 people went to Appaloosa Nationals. So if they're saying it was 1,000 people, it must have been made up in the youth. I didn't stay for Youth World. I don't know. I don't have any kids that are showing. So there's no sense in me saying. Plus, I couldn't afford to stay any longer than that. What I did notice, other than the back numbers, is that they were starting to take down the day stalls early. You know, the stalls across from the main barn that everybody likes to be in, you know, the day stalls, the not-so-nice stalls that they have over there, temporary stalls. They were tearing those down early because there's nobody over there. I didn't go down over in the parking garage in those day stalls to see how many people over there. But again, I will say we were there towards the end of nationals, which would be the end of nationals, beginning of youth. I would have thought that there would be more people there. I didn't see a whole lot of people as it was, period, there. there. I mean, obviously, there are people there competing and all that, but not like it normally is. So, I don't know. I'll have to believe them. They said there's a thousand people. I don't know if that number is up or down. I'm guessing it's down. I don't know that, but guess we'll see. Okay, so I have in my soil stained calloused hands the draft of the Appaloosa World schedule. It's a tentative schedule. I'm not going to go all the way through it. Number one, because it's a tentative schedule. So I don't want to give out information and, and not be wrong. But World This Year starts on October 23rd and ends on November 2nd. Now, October 23rd and 24th, according to the tentative schedule, are move in days and practice days. 23rd to be the beginning of move in. And then the 24th will be trail and hunter hack practice. And then on the 25th is when world actually starts. Now, this is what I'm going to say about the schedule. There's no continuity to it, period. You have classes that are like cow horse classes. And then right in the middle of that, you have like a hunter hack class. And then you got some more cow horse classes and then you have like men's heritage 
and then another hunt seat class, or another few hunt seat classes, and then you have another cow horse class. That doesn't make sense to me. If I was going to show a halter horse, all right, for example, we were planning on this year and we're not going to do it, having three halter horses at World. We're going to have a yearling, gelding, a weanling, and a two-year-old stallion. If we did that, we would literally be there for two weeks straight. I don't know about you, but I don't have four weeks of vacation to take, two weeks for national and two weeks for world. I don't know many people that do have that. I know somebody at nationals this year that is a husband and wife team. The wife went, did nationals, and then the husband showed up for youth world because they couldn't afford for him to take off two weeks to help her at nationals. So he had to pick and choose. So he went for world, went and watched. Normally, he shows at nationals, but he couldn't do it this year because of the way it was broke up. Nationals and world are both the same thing. This is one of the arguments that I've had, or one of the complaints I've had about both nationals and world, is everything's broke up. Here's what I believe, and I may be wrong, and you can correct me if I am wrong, but you're going to have to do some hard arguing to convince me otherwise. This schedule that I have right here is set up for the professionals. It is set up for the trainers. It is not set up for the amateur non-pro. It's not set up for a non-pro person. It is set up for the trainers so they can be there the entire two weeks. For you and I, the people who are the majority of the APHC, the people who mostly support the APHC, it's not set up for us. My suggestion, I, and there is, this is the reason I'm bringing this up, is because tonight, this podcast is going to come out Monday, July 29th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. The advisory board for the show committee is going to meet to go over this schedule. So if you have something to say about it, you need to let me know now. Don't wait. Let me know now because I'm going to say something about this schedule. All right, let, let's look at regional clubs. One of the most successful regional shows is the Winsota show in Wisconsin, between Wisconsin and Minnesota. The way that they do it, and also if you look at Pinot World this year, Buckskin World, and NSBA, they had record numbers this year, and they do their shows the same way. What they do is they set it up according to what you're showing. They take one or two days for halter. They take one or two days for hunter. And then they take one or two days for Western. So you're all in this block. If you're showing Western, you show up on these days. If you're showing hunt seat, you show up on these days. If you're showing halter, you show up on these days. Now, I haven't mentioned yet the games people. Dude, according to this schedule, if you're doing games, you're there for two weeks, and it's all spread out, and you're going to be doing some late nights if you want to do games. The problem with this schedule is it makes people pick and choose. If I can't afford to be there, the entire two weeks, which I can't afford to be there the entire two weeks. You got to take into consideration stalls, hotel, food, plus I got to pay somebody to take care of my farm for two weeks, gas, all that kind of stuff. I can't do that. If I have a trainer, you know, like we did last year, we did non-pro and we had a trainer showing, then I got those expenses also. I figured it out. For what I would spend at World for three horses, I could take my entire family, me, my wife, my two boys, to Hawaii for a very nice vacation. I'm not talking on the cheap. I'm talking 
Very nice. Staying there for two weeks, staying in a nice hotel, going out and seeing the sights, not having to worry about a budget. Well, there would be a little bit of a budget, but not that much. So how many of y'all want to spend that on a horse show? How many of y'all want to spend that on a horse show two times a year? Because Nationals is set up exactly the same way. Just saying. So my suggestion that I'm going to make tonight at 7 o'clock Central is that we block the show. Halter gets two days. Hunt Seat gets two or three days. Western gets two or three, four days. Whatever. You know, I don't know the exact layout of how it would work. But everything should be blocked. If you're showing Halter, and that's all you show is Halter, then you should only be there for a couple of days. And I know what the argument to this is. If they spread it out like this, then we stay there longer. They make more money. The hotels make more money. The restaurants make more money. The trainers make more money. But here's the deal. They would make the same, if not more, money by blocking it. Because if I'm coming in for my halter horses, I'm doing a couple of days, and then I'm leaving. Somebody else, because now it's more affordable, somebody else is going to be stepping basically right into my spot and doing hunt seat. And then when they leave, somebody else is going to be stepping right into their spot and doing Western. They think by spreading this stuff out, it makes them more money. But what they don't understand is they make it unaffordable for the average person. Do you want to take two weeks? To stay at a horse show the entire time. I like horse showing. I enjoy it. But two weeks, that's kind of pushing it. I believe that's why when Soda's show is so popular, there's people coming from all over the United States to go to that show. It's a two-day show. The first day is halter and hunt seat. Second day is western and games. You know, it's basically if you only do western, it's a one-day show. If you only do hunt seat, it's a one-day show. If you only do halter, it's a one-day show. Then you're gone, and you're done. It makes it affordable. And they give out good prizes, too. That's another thing. So, like I said, if you want to give me your two cents worth, tell me I'm wrong, tell me I'm right, whatever. Hit me up, email me, AppaloosaMedia1 at gmail.com, or hit me up on Facebook, Appaloosa Media. Like I said, the meeting is going to be at 7 Central, Monday, July 29th, 2019. You got to let me know beforehand if you agree or disagree. doesn't matter if you disagree with me or not. I'll listen to you, but I believe this is the truth. This schedule and nationals is set up for the trainers and for the professionals, specifically the trainers. It's not set up for you and I, the non-pros. It's not set up for those people out there trying to make it on their own. It's just not. If you haven't heard, the board voted to move Appaloosa Nationals and Appaloosa Youth World to Indianapolis, Indiana for 2021. Now, the board had previously voted to move Nationals and Youth World to Oklahoma City, but then they rescinded that vote and here just recently decided to go to Indianapolis. Why all of a sudden the vote went, went from Oklahoma City to Indianapolis? Well, somebody said, and again, this is just somebody saying, it was put out there on social media, that somebody threatened a lawsuit. And you might ask yourself, how could they threaten the lawsuit? Well, the charter for the APHC's nonprofit is out of Oregon. And in Oregon, it states that if the board makes a decision that drastically reduces or causes a bankruptcy of a member of the APHC, that each board member could be held liable. So again, If that's the truth, then why does moving from Oklahoma City to Indianapolis remove that threat? 
I have yet to heard an answer on that one. And I haven't really heard if that's a verifiable thing or not. That is something I was told. I was told by a board member. I'm going to have to believe him on that one. But what I don't understand, again, is how is moving from Oklahoma City to Indianapolis remove that threat of a lawsuit? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And I know they've been in negotiations with Oklahoma City. They made the decision to move to Oklahoma City, and they were in negotiations with Oklahoma City to move Nationals and Youth World there. I heard that Oklahoma City was going to give us $50,000 incentive. Again, it's all hearsay. I don't know if that's the truth or not. But again, I heard it from a board member, so I'm guessing that's probably pretty correct. I don't know if Indianapolis is given an incentive or not. So, but in the meantime, in between uh, pulling the vote from Oklahoma City and taking the vote to move to Indianapolis, the APHC put out a survey, which I think is a little bit fishy anyhow. I never received an email. They said they were sending out an email. I never received an email. My wife never received an email. Both of us are members. Then I heard it was on the website. I went and looked on the website trying to find it. Couldn't find it. Then I got busy doing other things. And then I went back to the website. Couldn't find it. Sent a message to a board member. Said, hey, where's it at? And they said, oh, they took it down already. So I guess I kind of lost it on that one because, you know, hey, life happens, right? You get busy. But I do have the results of the survey. And I will put the link to this the results of the survey in the show notes if you want to look. The very first question is in your APAC number. Obviously, that one's blank. The, very, the second question is, what are you within APAC? Are you a trainer? Are you a client of a professional trainer? Are you a standalone competitor? Or are you a member of the APHC but do not currently show in APHC approved shows? The largest majority of people who answered this survey were clients of a professional trainer at almost 36%. It's 231 people. The other one was a standalone competitor at 207. Not a whole lot of difference in the two. Here's one thing I will point out about this survey. It is not reflective of the APAC membership. There were only 651 people who responded to this survey out of, what, 10,000 APHC members? That's less than 7% of the entire APHC membership. That's not very reflective of the membership. Just I'm going to start with saying that. I don't believe it's reflective. I think that percentage should be higher before this is used as a tool to say, oh, this is what the APHC members think. But even if we look at this survey, the choice to move it to Indianapolis still doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but we'll go from there. And listen, I am not saying anything negative about going to Indianapolis. What I'm saying is I don't understand the reason. No one has given me the reason of why they decided to do that instead of going to Oklahoma City. To me, Oklahoma City makes more sense. It's like almost dead center of the United States, north, south, east, west. Actually, Tulsa is closer to being dead center, but Oklahoma City is more dead center. If you're trying to be fair to the most amount of people, Oklahoma City makes more sense to me. Like I said, I'm not saying anything negative about going to Indianapolis. I think probably the people on the East Coast in Wisconsin, Minnesota, Indy, Illinois, all those people are probably thrilled to death. Florida, they're thrilled to death it's in Indianapolis. Great for them. Not saying anything negative about it. Okay, so the next question says, in the past five years, have you attended and it's shows, 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015, 2014. Okay. And it's the amount of shows, one to three APHC regional shows, three or more APHC regional shows, 
APHC Nationals or Youth World and an APHC World. What you'll notice is at APHC Nationals and Youth World and APHC World, if you go from 2014 to 2018, the numbers are slowly going down. However, if you look at the people who have attended between one and three regional shows or three or more regional shows, those numbers are going up. Except for last year, the uh, one to three went down, but the three or more went up. So it sounds like, looking at these numbers, that people have increased going to their regional shows and they're going to more of their regional shows. People are not going to the nationals world, but they're going to the regional shows and they're attending more of their regional shows. All right, the next question, have you participated in nationals or youth world in the last five years? And what did you attend as? Either a horse owner, an open exhibitor, non-pro exhibitor, youth, trainer, spectator. The largest percentage said, I have not participated. 45% said that they have not participated in nationals or youth world. 35% were a horse owner and 25% as a non-pro. And then 22% as a spectator. There's also family member and support service and youth. Youth was only about 7%. That's surprising. But the largest number of people who answered this question, almost 50%, 45%, said that they had not participated in nationals. That's a big number. Even, even at 651 people, only 651 people, only 7% of the representation of the APHC membership said that they have not attended nationals. Should be a wake-up call, right? All right, next question. How would you rate your overall experience at the most recent National Youth World show that you attended? 25% said positive. 11% said very positive. 22% said neutral. And then 32% said never attended. Then the next question, have you ever attended a horse show at Will Rogers Memorial Center in Fort Worth, Texas? Almost 80% of the people who answered said yes. Regardless of whether you attended a horse show at the site, what is your overall impression of Fort Worth and Will Rogers Memorial Centers? 28% said very positive. 38, almost 39% said positive. Next question, have you ever attended a horse show at the State Fair Park in Oklahoma City? Almost 60%, 58.06, said yes. What was your overall impression of Oklahoma City? 21% said very positive, 35% said positive, 17 neutral, and 22% said no opinion. Next question, have you ever attended a horse show at Indiana State Fairgrounds in Indianapolis? 23% said yes, 76.65, almost 77, said no. Regardless of whether you attended a show at the site, what is your overall impression of Indianapolis? 39%, almost 40%, had no opinion. 11.37 said very positive, 15.51 said positive. If you have never attended the National Youth World Show, or if you've attended before but no longer participate, please indicate why. This is question number 12. 40% of the people who answered this questionnaire said the distance to travel is too far. 32% said overall financial investment too great. 24% said they attend, and 22% said other. So the two biggest reasons that people don't go to nationals or youth world is it's too far and it costs too much money. What was I just talking about the world show? 
And what was I saying about this year's nationals? Next question. If you currently attend or would like to attend National Youth World Show, please indicate the three factors that are important to you. Number one, 72.66% location. Number two, 51% amenities, parking, stalls, arenas, accessibility. The people who answered this questionnaire want it easy to get to the show. They want it easy to be at the show. The next one below that, much farther below that, at 23%, desire to compete a national show. So the top two things, again, location and amenities, which is kind of lacking at Fort Worth. It's not, I'm not going to say it's lacking, but let me back off that a little bit. They're there, but it's like every single thing costs you something, costs you money. To get in for parking costs you money. If you're going to be there for two weeks, how much... I'm trying to remember how much it costs for toll. So what is that? Five dollars a day. So for two weeks, you're talking a hundred bucks for just parking to be able to come in and out. And then if you're staying there at the facilities, if you're using power and all that, actually to stay at will to stay at Fort Worth is almost as much as it costs to stay out in the hotel. I mean, what's the sense in? bringing your travel trailer or your trailer and staying in your trailer when it costs you almost as much as it costs you to stay out in the hotel. At least at a hotel, I get a free breakfast. And then you talk to the people who are there, especially your nationals, and the power is not good enough to power everybody that's there. It, it's lacking. They didn't, they didn't juice it up the way they should. You know, it's like everybody's talking about how hot their trailers and their RVs were because there wasn't enough power to push all those ACs going. In that case, I'd rather be out in the hotel. At least I know my AC works. If my AC don't work, then I can go complain about it and somebody's either going to fix it or I might get a new room, right? Okay, next question. If you attended National Youth World Show within the last five years, how many horses did you bring? The reason for me was blank. Only 452 people answered it. Almost 200 people skipped it. Should the show be moved from Fort Worth to either Oklahoma City or Indianapolis, the APHC will realize a decrease in incentive money and an increase in facility fees. How much total per horse would you be willing, able to pay to support the move? A large majority, 74% of the people said less than $150. And then from there, because your choices were less than $150, $150 to $249, $250 to $349, or $350 to $350. Or more. After the less than $150 drastically goes down, like the next one between $150 to $249 is less than half. It's like $35.33. And then even more than that for the higher ones. All three. Of the $150 to up to $350 combined together do not meet the percentage of people that said less than $150. And then the no portion of that question goes from like 26% to 93.5%. So people do not want to pay more for the horse show to move. Please indicate how likely you are to attend the 2021 National Youth World Show in each of the following locations. Oklahoma City, and this is broken down between very likely, likely, undecided, unlikely, very unlikely. Oklahoma City, 21.9% very likely. 21.6% likely. 23% undecided. 12% unlikely. 20% very unlikely. Indianapolis, 25.8% very likely. 12%, actually closer to 13% likely. 17% undecided. 7, almost 8% unlikely. 
and 36.4% very unlikely. Now, Fort Worth, 22%, almost 23%, very likely, 11% likely, 17% undecided, 10% unlikely, 37.94%, almost 38%, very unlikely. So now if we look at all three of these together, Oklahoma City between the very likely and the likely is like 44 to 45%. Indianapolis is like eh, just shy of 40%. Again, this is very likely and likely. And then Fort Worth is like 32%. So Indy and Oklahoma City are close. Oklahoma City, between the very likely and likely, was higher though. And then your undecideds, your undecideds between Indy and Fort Worth were pretty close. And then Oklahoma City was at like 24%. So there's more people undecided about going to Oklahoma City than Indy and Texas. If you look at the unlikely and very unlikely, Oklahoma City was at 32, 33%. Indy was at like 43 to 45%. And then Fort Worth is at 48 to 50%, unlikely to very unlikely. So if you just look at those numbers on average, just going by the percentages, more people were likely or very likely to go to Oklahoma City and less people were unlikely or very unlikely to go to Oklahoma City. Fort Worth, by far, lost out, period. Indy and Oklahoma City were pretty close until you got into the unlikely and very unlikely, but Oklahoma City was winning out a little bit, okay? So, again, I don't understand why it went from Oklahoma City to Indy. Going by these numbers and going by geographical location, I don't understand. I don't understand why the board made the decision to move to Indy. Okay, so here's where I think we might see why they decided to go to Indy. Last question, in what state or country do you reside? So I'm not going to read all of them. I'm just going to go through here and highlight some of them. California was 23, Colorado was 20. Illinois is 29, Indiana 26, Iowa 16, Michigan 40, Wisconsin 40. Starting to see a trend. Majority of the people who answered this were from that Indy area. They would have benefited from nationals going to India would have been a shorter drive for them. And then the largest number of people who answered the question were from Texas. So for the people in Texas, if they know that nationals on youth world is going to move out of Fort Worth, Oklahoma city is a better drive for them than Indy. But a majority of people who answered this questionnaire were more from the Indianapolis area. Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Florida. Florida, 26% of the people, 4% of the, po- of the people who answered the question were from Florida. So you would think with that number, the Indy would have won out a little bit, right? I mean, that to me, in my mind, I'm like, okay, if most of those people are answering that question or from that area, you would think Indy would win out. But, but Oklahoma City actually won out by a slim margin, but it still won. 89% of the people who answered the questionnaire were from Texas. Here's something kind of funny for you. Only 15% of the people from Oklahoma answered the questionnaire, 2.3%. So 
again, I'm not saying anything negative about nationals or youth going to Indy. Again, it's going to come down to scheduling for us. If they block the scheduling like a lot of the regional shows do, I'm not going to say a lot of the regional shows, but the most popular regional shows. Let me say it that way, okay? I'm not going to say most. I'm going to say the regional shows that have the best success seem to be doing the blocking. They're doing the classes by discipline. Those are the ones that have the most success. Same thing with the Pintos, same thing with the Buckskin, same thing with NSBA, as well as the POAs. They all block it by discipline. They've been doing pretty good. They've had record numbers this year showing. Think they're doing something right. Yes, Pinto has a little bit of advantage to us because it's not a breed show. It's a color show. Same thing with buckskin. But still, horse show numbers aren't going down. The breed show numbers are going down. And maybe it's because they do things the old-fashioned way. I know when we used to show hunters out on the East Coast, they block things. Obviously, it's a hunter show, so your discipline is hunters. But they would put the peewees in the beginning, in the morning, and then the youth. And then they would do over fences, so before it got too hot. And then later on in the afternoon, when it was getting hot, you were doing your hat classes. Kind of helped save the horses. You know, they did their jumps in the beginning, you know, before it got too hot, where they're exhorted in the mo- most effort. And then you had your hat classes later in the afternoon. Why are we not doing that? It makes sense. It makes logical sense. If I was to sit down and do a horse show, that's the way I'd be doing it. I'm like, okay, here's your halter people. Here's your hunter people. Here's your Western people. And then maybe sprinkle the games out in between. Probably put it more towards the Western stuff because in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, there's probably more Western people doing the games than, say, halter or hunters, right? (laughs) You know, uh, the very last class of the day at World, the very last class of the entire show, according to this tentative schedule, is driving. Do Western people drive? I, don't, I haven't seen a whole lot of Western people driving. I think that's more the hunter people that do driving. So why is driving not closer related to the hunter people? Now, I might be wrong. I think I've heard of Western driving before. Never seen it. Never seen anybody do it before. But I'm thinking it's more hunter people that do driving. So why is driving at the very end with Western? Doesn't make sense. Anyhow. I'm done. That's my rant. My next segment is there's people who go, hey, why does APHC spend so much time focusing on the horse shows? My next segment of this show is about the financials. I'm going to answer that question for you. So I went back and I looked at the financials for the APHC from 2008 to 2018, giving us a 10-year window to see the financials for the club. And like I just said earlier, I'm about to answer the question of all those people that ask, why does APHC spend so much time, effort, and money on the nationals and world shows. So I went back and I looked at the financials for 2008. I could not find the financials on the APHC's website, but because they are a nonprofit organization, they have to share those financials with the public. So I found it in other places. In 2008, the APHC 
made $5,199,942. Of course, because they're a nonprofit, their expenses were $5,199,094,000. Cuz that that's what a nonprofit is. In 2018, or excuse me, yeah, in 2018, the Appaloosa Horse Club made $3,249,357. So that's a pretty substantial drop. That's a drop of over $2 million in over a 10-year period. So you can understand why the board of directors and the CEO, Steve Taylor, is concerned. That's a pretty major drop over 10 years. I don't know how other breed associations are doing. Uh, you know, I hear everybody's losing membership and everybody's all that kind of stuff. What I'd like to go in and kind of point out, though, is the breakdown of that money. $345,334 came from the Appaloosa Journal. $340,000 came from membership dues. Then there's a line here that says other, it's, tw- it's $29,000. Registration, almost $500,000. So registrations are more than membership dues. Now, here comes the big one. Shows and other events, $2 million $47,646. Now, do you need to ask why the board and all that focuses on horse shows and why they're concerned about the numbers of people that are not going to the horse shows? Let me read that number to you again. $2,047,646. A large majority of the APHC's budget comes from horse shows. And actually, if you want to go through here and look, you can actually find out how much the CEO makes. I'll be honest with you. For a CEO of a company, even a nonprofit company, it's not really all that much. I'll let you guys go figure it out if you want to go figure it out. But I was really surprised. It it's a lot lower than, say, a CEO of a private business, especially a corporation that is as large as the APHC. Even for a nonprofit, it's pretty low. Just saying. Just wanted to point that out. All right, so that's it for this episode. Next episode. I went through all of the minutes for all the committees for the APHC since January of this year just to help you guys catch up on what's going on in the committees and give you an idea of what they're thinking with the changes they're trying to make. A lot of the changes are pretty good. ACAP, distance, all that. There's there's some board members out there trying to make some good changes. So we'll cover that on the next episode. Until then, happy trails. Hey, if you're still listening, you're one of the dedicated listeners to this show. I want to apologize for my absence over the last couple of months. We got into foaling season and breeding season. And then work got real busy. We're shorthanded. You know how the routine goes sometimes. Anyhow, what I wanted to let you know is you'll start noticing some changes to the show. The focus of the show is going to change to some extent. I'm going to start focusing more on the non-pros and the amateurs. Those people that got one or two horses, maybe three horses, they're trying to do it themselves. Maybe they got one horse and they got a trainer, and then they're also trying to do it themselves, trying to compete at non-pro. What I want to do is to be your voice. What I want to do 
is to help you be the best that you could be at showing non-pro. We're going to work on getting tips for you. We're going to work on getting vet tips for you. All that kind of stuff. Maybe getting somebody on that can tell us or that can let us know what trends are happening with clothing and all that kind of stuff. All the stuff that you need to make yourself more successful. That's where the focus is going to be. We're not going to focus on trainers. We're not going to focus on breeders. We will focus on breeders if you're a smaller breeder. Kind of bring you guys more to the front. Allow people to know who you are, what your program's about, all that kind of stuff. Like I said, non pros are the heart and the soul of the APHC. And I believe that the APHC keeps turning its back on you. Not only are the non pros, but you got your distance riders, you got your trail riders, you got your games people. All those people are what the majority of the membership of the APHC is. It's not people that go to shows. Yes, shows are fun. That is something that we participate in. But there are other things that I like to participate in also. Just re- looking on Facebook and saw that they just finished the Chief Joseph Ch- Trail Ride. That looks really cool. Looks like a lot of fun. I don't know if I'm at that level to be doing something like that or if I have the time to be doing something like that. Again, and think about it. Most of those people have one or two horses. They work for a living. So they're not going to have the vacation time or probably the finances to go do the Chief Joseph trail ride and then turn around and spend time doing the Nationals or the World Show, not unless it's convenient for them. They don't have the finances or the time to spend a week at Chief Joseph, two weeks at Nationals, and two weeks at World. And part of my mission on the advisory committee to the show committee is to try to help point that out. I want to make it more affordable or at least more convenient for those people who do the Chief Joseph to maybe show up for a couple of days at Nationals or show up for a couple of days at World so that we can all participate in stuff like this. It might not be of interest to them. They might, just might not want to do it. But you got to think, a horse that went on Chief Joseph is probably going to do pretty good, at least in Ranch Trail, right? Or at least in Trail, non, non-pro. You would think. I mean, that's what Trail's supposed to be all about, is showing how good your horse would be out on the trail, right? Something to think about. And yeah, like I said, you're going to start noticing some changes in the show. We're going to refocus. And it's not really a refocus of the show. It's more of, in the military, we have what they call mission drift. The show's kind of had a little mission drift. It's kind of drifted off the original purpose of the show. We're going to bring it back to where the original focus of the show was intended to be. If you like what you heard, go subscribe to the show. We are everywhere that you get your music. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and now Pandora. So any place that you go online to listen to music, we're there. And then after you do that, go tell a friend. Tell them about the show. Have them subscribe to the show. Heck, Show them how to subscribe to the show. Thank you for listening. Happy trails.